India Mobile Congress and on Tech Today and Business Today we have a very special guest Ankit Agarwal of Thank STL. You. What a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Ankit, this is a really cool booth, one that really caught my eye. But you have to explain to me how all of this really works. Sure. The neon and all the cool things aside, this essentially to me is how the internet reaches our homes. Am I right? Absolutely. The whole ambition for STL is to take and empower the country towards Prime Minister's vision of five trillion economy. Mm -hmm. Within that, just the digital part will be one trillion out of that. And the whole ambition is if we can take optical fiber and broadband to every citizen, to 1.4 billion people, it will make the most massive shift. So not only are we looking at 5G, we're taking our fiber to every village on the back of Bharatnet. Interesting. So you're going to walk me through it as well. Yeah, absolutely. But, absolutely. but, but largely I find it interesting that, you know, everyone's been talking about 5G and the image that that conjures in everyone's head is this wireless sort of a system. Yeah. But there are fibers involved on the tech front. You have to explain that to okay. us. Okay. So it's very important to understand as you go from 3G to 4G to 5G, nothing is more important. As you go more wireless, you need more wire. Correct. Right. And optical fiber is the best medium because what's happening is your bandwidth requirements are exploding 10x. And your latency, which is in simple parlance, your response rate is going from 50 milliseconds to about 10 milliseconds. Almost no input lag. There's no lag and all your computing now needs to happen at the edge. It cannot go to large data centers to compute. So all of that means that right now, right here, we need to compute and make the response and give it back. Okay. Right? So what that means is the fiber requirement in our country will actually explode by three times. Okay. We deploy about 20 million fiber kilometers a year in India. That has to go to at least 60 million fiber kilometers. To enable 5G, to enable fiber to the home, fiber to enterprise, and take our fiber to 6 lakh villages of the country. Interesting. And, and this is the raw materials, the equipment that you'd be using to do that? Absolutely. So what you have here is what's called a glass preform. In simple parlance, this is the most state-of-the-art glass technology from which you then draw optical fiber. There's only one company in India, Sterlight, which makes this. And there are only five companies in the world that have this technology. So it's something to be very proud of that by nature of doing this, we actually don't need to import this in the country anymore. Interesting, interesting. From this, then what you really have is you take that massive piece of glass right. and you actually draw optical fiber. Right. And this is the hair thin fiber that you see out here. This is literally hair thin Absolutely. and you have more than 100 parameters that get tested on this. And you can, one strand of fiber can have multi terabits of, fiber, of data that go through it. All right, that, that, this one becomes interesting and clearly there is a, a larger role for some of these things to play in the 5G ecosystem but this is just one visual sort of a demonstration of it. I'm, I'll imagine you need thousands of these to build a cable. Absolutely. So what you have out here for example is 432 strands of fiber that goes into such a small diameter of cable. Right. And what you have is actually the world's largest fiber optic cable made by STL in India. This has 6,900 strands of fiber in it. Right. To put it in context, a typical operator only puts 100 to 200 strands of fiber. Right. We've gone ahead and built this for one of the largest data center players in the world. Right. Because what's also happening on the back of 5G, you need a lot more data centers to compute. Right. And those data centers just need massive amount of fiber to process all of this data. You know, you said you want to reach out to the villages with this technology. See, I, you know, I was doing a panel uh, the other day at IMC and we were talking to the ministry as well. The conversation about 5G, how imperative is it for it to be inclusive, right? And how do the public and private sector get together yep. and all of us spreading awareness about it to make sure it's inclusive. It's not something which is only restricted to the urban and semi-urban areas. No, absolutely. I think you're, you're spot on. I think the way to think about it is that there's three, three elements. One is how do you deploy the core infrastructure for 5G and take that across India? Correct. I think largely the way the operators are committing, not only are they going to go to large cities, it will go to tier 2, tier 3 cities yeah. and keep growing from that. Yeah. On top of that, also the fiber that's going to be deployed because of Bharat net kind of projects will ensure fiber goes to the villages. What's then left is to make sure you have the cell sites also going to the villages. On top of that, what's also critical is the handsets yeah. now need to come to probably sub 10,000 rupees, Correct. which I'm very bullish will happen. All of this will lead, in my view, from going to zero users today to about 300 million users in the next three to five years. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. And the handsets is a big deal. A lot of questions that come to us even on the show are, what about our existing handsets? What about our existing, existing SIM cards? So a lot more awareness needs to be spread about 5G. And just to finish the last piece of the yeah. jigsaw, what is this all about? So what happens is that ultimately what we are seeing on, in, in India and around the world is you can have all the optical fiber, but you actually have lack of train manpower. And if you think of in rural India and other places, it's actually extremely challenging to find skilled manpower to deploy this. 
So we took that challenge at STL and said, how do you simplify the deployment, make it as plug and play as possible, so you actually can get a 12th pass person to go and put it in the field. So we've actually launched some of these solutions, some of the closures and the boxes, yeah. which are fully plug and play and connectorized, so that you just go put it in the field in seconds and your network's good to go. Fascinating, you know, Ankit, and you know, you just look at this, look, you're a tech enthusiast as well. If you look at how the ecosystem is building, yeah. and when we're talking about this very all-inclusive sort of agenda with 5G, uh, a lot of things have been said in India Mobile Congress. Yeah. Firstly, I want to get your thoughts on what you make of India Mobile Congress sure. 2022. Sure. The world has opened up again, yeah. touch wood, and everyone's comparing this to Mobile World Congress. Yeah. You're Absolutely. no stranger to the MWC as yeah. well. What are your thoughts on the IMC really being this sort of a global phenomenon? So I must say, firstly, like you hear about revenge shopping, this is kind of like revenge get-together, entire industry is here. Tech Geeks Assembly. Everyone's here. It's like one big family. You know, we all work with each other and there's a real agenda, you know, and all of us so excited with Prime Minister here, all the, all the big leaders here. The whole intent is to deploy this network as fast as possible because one thing I'm clear, you cannot take a hospital to every village, you cannot take the best teachers to every yeah, village, yeah. but you can do that through networks. And one solution we've launched out here is our STL GARV, right. which is what we're saying, you can take fiber to every part of India, but how do you build the use cases? So this is something designed by us, we patented it, and these are the kind of kiosks we believe the 6 lakh villages of India, if you take these kiosks, then you can actually get teachers to get into these villages, and we have actually put these in 10 villages across India. And just the responses, especially during COVID, have been unbelievable. I'm going to make you, you've been donning the MD of STL hat for this whole interview. I'm going to make you take that hat off. Okay. And, and now, essentially, tell me, when you talk about the use cases of 5G, yeah. for you, as someone who's tracked the industry and, and knows about the promise that yeah. it brings, what are the top two or three use cases? It could be the metaverse, sure. anything sure, that, that you're really looking forward to in the next yeah. five or ten years. So I would say two or three that come immediately to mind. Firstly, while we don't, we talk about the common man using 5G, yeah. there's equal and more application on the enterprise. Correct. So there's, in my own view, about 50% of the application will actually be on the enterprise side. Okay. If you look at just manufacturing as a sector, we are probably, our productivity in our manufacturing in India is one-eighth of the US. Okay. I believe that can get scaled up by 5G, by using automation, by using efficiency. Private 5G we can just be much more efficient in our manufacturing. So I think that's the first one. The second one, I truly believe, if you have to look at skill development, yep. you cannot. that's one of the biggest challenges of our youth today. Correct. To actually take skill development using AR, VR, I think you can use 5G in a very meaningful way. And I think the third part actually is again on the healthcare and farming. I'll give you one use case. John Deere, which is a global uh, yep. agriculture company, for tractors, they've actually launched driverless tractors, right? So I don't know about driverless cars on our roads with all the issues we have, yeah. but if you look at tractors in, in you know, open land in yeah. a confined network, you can actually put a private network there, and instead of our farmers in 50 degrees temperature losing their lives, can you have driverless tractors doing that for them, and they focus on value addition. Very interesting, low latency networks, how the internet really gets to you in your home. I found this very fascinating. I really appreciate it, Ankit. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure, and maybe the next time we do this, we're in a driverless tractor or a driverless car in Mumbai. Done. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.